Michigan murders and leaving you with a happy ending on a good note. The happy ending means a, a Michigan note. band, and it'll be on a good note. Michigan murders and music. So we have an explicit warning that we need to present to everyone before our show can start. The warning is we're going to talk about naughty things well, and yeah. murderous things, yep. and, and I might wear, and or sometimes sound drunky. Sometimes? So what what happens when... Kids are left unattended. You find teeth in a jar in their room, and you have nothing to blame it on but yourself because you let them listen to us. No, no, we have nothing to do with that. Uh, Who collects teeth in a jar? Weird kids do it. uh, They might as well be collecting fingernails. Don't let your children listen to this podcast for fuck's sake. Yeah. Thank you. Good idea. I may or may not have shout outs. We went to Chicago, and I honestly just have not been on our social media. Mm-hmm. I will say the Chicago House of Blues, fantastic place to see a show. It's a great venue. We might have been a little naughty in the endless securities little headphones. Oh, system. yeah, yeah. We tried <laughs> to explore every floor in every cove. And it, we were they kept like, grabbing us like, yeah, you know, you're not supposed to be up here. Okay. We were like, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. He, he. So we, we weren't misbehaving or anything, just adventurous. We were, we had to check out what we had to check out while we were there. Mm-hmm. The Allerton Warwick Hotel, a.k.a. Tip Top Tap, a.k.a. where Frank Sinatra, Frank Sinatra. graced the I'm, goddamn I'm, hall. Bing Crosby played there. Lucille Ball was also known to be there. It was built in the 1920s. It went through the whole prohibition thing, Mm. which means they had alcohol there. Um, Yeah. Yeah, it was great. But um, ultimately, my biggest shout out is to the people that we met in Gary, Indiana, which I was taken. I like to take photos of abandoned places. People and Gary were so friendly to us, just helpful. I, we didn't even ask for help, and they were like, Oh, you're, you're taking pictures? I was standing across the street, crouched down, taking photos of a building, and this cute little gangster kid in his adorable car stopped. And I didn't realize he was stopped. You were like, Mary, Mary. He, he, he just wants to go past. He's waiting for you to stop. People in this goddamn town wouldn't oh, do they, they'd that. Oh, they'd be honking their horns. Yeah. They'd just go. They'd they get, wouldn't honk mm-hmm. their horns. This kid was like, oh, here, I'll let her take her photo. Come on. And then I was taking photos on this main drag and this lady, Sylvia, who's a retired, most beautiful lady ever, comes out and is like, you need to take a picture of the house over there because a boy died of heroin overdose. I was like, I don't need to be reminded of the people we've lost of heroin overdose. However, it's a, it's a thing. You know. I'm going to come over and talk to you. And so I ran across the street and we were chatting. She's like, did you go to the Jackson 5 house yet? And I was like, no, because our goddamn phones aren't working. We didn't even know about the Jackson 5 house. I did. You it did. It was in my notebook, but our, I, we'd go to places and people are like, I don't know where that is. <laughs> yeah, over and over again. So she was like, you need to take this light, take that light, go there and this there. I was like, great. We hop in the van. We get to the first light, and she rolls up beside she, us. She comes speeding up. Hey, hey, hey. Windows down. Follow me. I'm going to show you right where it is. Took us there, got out of the car, talked we to talked. us. We talked, yep. 
learned that his high school was right behind there, which I didn't know. And I'm actually a Michael Jackson fan. Fuck you all. It's all right if there. If you don't like it. Yeah. So, anyways, shout out to Sylvia. I know where she lives. We're going to go <laughs> back and haunt her. <laughs> Also, the, uh, you know how it is when you're in a different city and you can act like you're someone you're not? Yeah. I oh. kind of got into the elevator at our hotel and I was like, yeah, we're murder podcasters. Blah, 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 blah. Because <laughs> I may or may not have been drinking all day. Yeah. So as soon as Mary said that, this, I'm, I'm like staring at the elevator floor. Which indicator. is what elevator? Are you know, the most awkward. Out of the side of my eye, I see this dude so standing right next awkward. to me, turn his head and look. I I felt like he snapped his head, like. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So and come to find out, these guys are the like next real fans. Day, of, mm-hmm. We're in the elevator when I'm sober, and they're like, "Hey, what are the chances a that we run into the same two people?" Right in that big of a city. Right, uh-huh. and I know we were staying in the same hotel, but they're like, hey, you're the murder podcasters. Um, yes, we are. <laughs> uh, I was kind of drunk last night. I'm really sorry about that. And the one guy was like, oh, no, blah, blah, blah. And you started talking to him, and I talked to his friend. I was like, dude, I don't know what I said to you guys last night. I'm <laughs> really sorry it, it about was that. But it was cool that they remembered, it you was, know. And it was great. People like this stuff. And and I did write and just like we down did. the name. The one guy was in a band. It's mm-hmm. not a Michigan band. From but a, I will Iowa. Look, Iowa, yeah. We, we'll look them up. Mm-hmm. We've been blabbering way too long. The whole point of going to Chicago was the goddamn interrupters. Oh, we saw them. And they oi, oi. Oh, they tore it up. I crowd surfed. I acted like I was 15. It was fantastically mm-hmm. great. We are going to go to this town of Ithaca. It's like right in the center of the mitten of Michigan. Uh, can't be the center. Is oh, it, it is. Grand Rapids it, it's the like, center? No. Okay. You think we're the center because the, the earth well. rotates around you <laughs> wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a cut. So, yeah, it's it's like right near St. Louis, Michigan, which is the considered the middle of Michigan. That's it is? approximately where it is. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. The more you know, thing. Uh, where so, is it in consideration to uh, the bathhouse murders? Oh, <laughs> the bath murders? The bath murders? It's not the bath murders. It's like the schoolhouse. Yeah, yeah. Bath schoolhouse um, murders. So you have Highway 127. We have very few highways to choose from. Yeah, which <laughs> goes north and south. Bath is just north of Lansing. And then Ithaca is... Is probably 30 miles north, right north up the same highway. Bath, yeah. yeah so the, there's... Just a, off the same highway. You know, highway. there's a highway connection. Shit always happens near a highway. So if you think that that campground off the exit of by where we live, which I'm not going to say out loud, is cool, it's not. It's a campground right next to right the, on highway. the highway. Yeah. People go there, they like it, I, you know. Yeah. Okay. Teach their own. But yeah, so this 127 corridor seems to have a bit of a history. Where is that town I love? Um, I don't know. Charlevoix? I, Idlewild. I do okay, I so, do love Charlevoix. Idlewild. We will find well, some um, history of... 37. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, let's get to the story. Idlewild's a great place, I hope. My God, I want to cover a story there, but I hope nothing bad happened. Let's, we are not focused. We need to get into the story. Okay, Sarah Jane Hart. She was at the ripe age of 28 years old. She'd already been married twice. Again, not judging. I'm on my third marriage. It's the best fucking marriage ever. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Third time's a charm. It, it, you are. I've got one more to go. You've got... Oh. <laughs> that means I'm going to die first. <laughs> At the time of the story, she was married to a man named Alonzo, who was a former Saginaw popo. 
Before his family problems caused him to get fired from that job, he became a truck driver. Sarah and Alonzo collectively had six children. Not all hers. Uh, some were his. Some It was the Brady Bunch. Mm-hmm. It happens. It happened back then. It happens now. We are a mixed community of family. So Sarah was a petite young lady, a spinner, as she would refer to. What? Back in like the 1800s, maybe. A spinner. Who yeah. would call her a spinner? Not, this is 1970. Nobody's going to call her. Nope. God damn it, Ron. Okay. Go on. So we can <laughs> say, you know, pretty effectively that her looks got her whatever the heck she oh, wanted. Oh, she totally used her looks. Yep. She'd play all, all vulnerable. It's like, oh, poor me. Oh. I need protection. Victim, I'm just a tiny girl. But she's a free-spirited woman, and it's the it's 1970, and she really wants to live the hippie life, which... She just wanted to sit around and do nothing and have sex and take drugs. We have totally been looking up the van life, and that's pretty much the same ass shit. I'm just tired of property taxes. Just Just tired of so much stuff to clean. So, Sarah (laughs) is known to have had at least three affairs before she settled upon her affair with Philip. Yep. 17 years old. Yeah, they Promising met. young man. He was just a little guy. Yeah, in high school. Yeah, younger than my youngest child of my loin. She met Philip. Let's well, talk about your loins for a minute. Let's not and okay. say we did. God, where'd that comment come from? She met little Philip when she was working at the Yellow Jacket Cafe. They both worked there. Yeah. The- Should we talk about the Yellow Jacket <laughs> Cafe for a minute? This is the 1970s. Not that it matters because this shit still happens yeah. today. Yeah. So it's it's like kind of a this weird club where all the good old boys hung out. And they- Not necessarily a gang. Like during the no, day it was like... the Brothers Club. You it was know? like the Tasty Freeze. Like during the day you could play pinball and shit. But at night it was... Yeah, they'd... They'd close the place up, and there'd be private parties upstairs. Prominent men of, only of Ithaca. Only invited known people yeah. were allowed in. Yeah. Private club. There were ladies. Ladies willing to do things that men the wanted them to do. The ladies in the house. All the ladies in the mm-hmm. house were calling. Yeah. Mm. It, that's <laughs> what Tootin they party. did. Come on. Mm-hmm. Bring a condom. So there was entertainment going up there. Uh, a 66-year-old Ithaca resident who has known many of the key players, as we say, the good old boys. Since he was 16. Yeah. Uh, he was like, I was aware of this, and my friends who worked there were aware of what was going on. So, I mean, come on, it's a, it's 70s. Oddly, what what was the population? <clears throat> Uh, in 1970, the population of Ithaca was 2,749 people. It, it's a really small town area of 5.7 like square miles. And what's the population now? <laughs> yeah, okay, just as a comparison, I, I used to live on the east side of the state, and I'd visit Hamtramck fairly often, had events, things going on there, but... It just as a comparison, Hamtramck compared to Ithaca, Hamtramck is 2.1 square miles. Ithaca is 5.7 square miles. Ithaca's population was 2,749 people. Hamtramck, which year? is about the third the size, is the same year. Okay. Is so I Hamtramck's for, population sorry, your is 22,423. People and that's one third the size of Ithaca. That's that's a significant difference in so Hamtramck is well they have their own police force and all, there all was kinds another, of inherent problems. Well, the good old boy syndrome is what yeah. it's called. It happens in every motherfucking state. Oh yeah, it's who you know. Whether you're in a city, yeah. in the backwoods, people band together, do stuff, and keep their mouths assholes. shut. Mm-hmm. Another Ithaca man also referred to adult parties on the upper level and offered to provide a current picture of the former Sarah Jane Hart. 
which, by the way, was a nudie. So, <laughs> back to Miss Sarah. She loved photography. Well, she took many photos, but from what I understand, she had more photos taken of. Yeah, she liked having her, her little body taken pictures of. Nudely. Mm-hmm. Nud- Nudely? Nudely. Nud- Noodles. Noodles with her so, clam uh, <laughs> A local man (laughs) who worked at a camera shop in Alma, which is real close to Ithaca, said Sarah was there hugging and kissing the manager. Yeah, I remember the song. Hugging and a kissing on Fred. Uh, Yes, I do remember. So she she and the manager were like looking at negatives and yeah, they were doing something in the back room. It was all dark back there, and apparently things went on. This guy said she bought lots of supplies. They, I'm sure she did. They, they weren't just working on photos. We, Boo. Yeah. Pretty sure that it was either A, getting her photos taken nudely in the back room, or B, getting rammed. Yeah, yeah. And I'm I, sorry to say it in such a crude way because I'm really not a sexual person, but she was totally fucking that guy in the oh, back room. You know it. Okay. So, so <laughs> later, Philip, Philip, little seventeen-year-old Philip, was given some of these photos of of his old lady. You know, dude. Who old, is yeah. Like Eleven years mm-hmm. older than him. So I, I am absolutely. Certain. You he showed everyone. You these know pictures. it. You, they were. And they were patting him on the back. And they he, were taped. Mm-hmm. To the inside of his locker in high oh, school. Oh, you know it. He was like, look at this. How does mom not find those with look all his crusty this towels cougar. and socks and stuff? <laughs> what? <laughs> Sarah was also known to supply little 17-year-old, pliable, psychologically vulnerable Philip with drugs mm-hmm. and let her use her car, which... He was probably like, fuck yeah, this is fantastic. Mm-hmm. She's given me drugs and her car to chill out in. He often had, he would have to drive her to like Mount Pleasant. Which is right straight up the same highway, 127. Which happens a to have north. a college up there. Yeah, Central Michigan University. Yeah, well, she was going to see a, a man who was on the up and coming and... <laughs> I did not just say coming. <laughs> God damn it. Nor up. And. I should not. God damn it. You can't say any of those words around you. That's what makes you fucking great. So, Philip and Sarah also spent many numerous nights in these other towns. Which is entertaining. Elma, Elma. Carson mm-hmm. City, Harrison. Acting like they're not going to get caught. Right, but everybody knows each other. These small towns. Come they, on. They, oh, they have nothing other than talking. And that's even back in the 70s. Yeah. Think about it They get now. on their phones right away and they're like, oh, oh hey. It yeah, was a party right. line. Hmm. Were some, that I'm was pretty weird. sure there were party lines back then. Oh, there were. Kids, if you're listening to this, oh, we forgot to do a kid warning at the beginning. God damn it. Oh, we should have. Oh, we'll do it again. Party lines were great. You could Oh, no, you can us. listen. Mm-hmm. Knows her, Nancy. My neighbor would be on that shit. I honestly, I would be on it now. I'd be like, Mary, get off the fucking party line. Shut up, boo. Uh huh. Okay. You got your hand just crammed over the receiver so they can't hear that, that you're listening. No, what you did was unscrew the bottom phone thing oh. and take wow. that part out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh. Sarah was also, I, I don't know any of those secret agent. No, of course you don't. That's games. why you didn't just pull that right out of your nope. top of your memory. Nope, I Googled mm-hmm. that before this uh-huh. this episode, before I did all this typing. What have Philip and Sarah been up to? Well, actually, Sarah kept a post office box to keep in touch with her numerous love hairs. Mm. She had one in Florida she mm. was keeping in touch with, and who knows what other ones, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, she has a P.O. box, so, you know, no accountability. I mean, it's very private. God, I feel like Except it's a small town, so, you know, whoever puts those letters in there oh, sees exactly like, where those addresses are coming yeah, from. Yeah, let's. 
steam this envelope uh-huh. open, read this shit. She thinks she's a Oh, demon. that's another thing I've done. You've steamed things open? Yeah. Be ashamed of yourself. I am, I, I am so no <laughs> Yeah, that's why my phone's broken, because you can't resist. Your you have to go phone, look through everything, and then you drop no, it. No, that's not why it's broken. It's because I took it out in the middle of the dance floor. Because oh. my phone was full and I couldn't take any more pictures. Ooh. Anyways, Phillips, taking her to places, having sex, blah, 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 blah. We've established Sarah's character, right? Uh, she's, she's a bit of a how. Mm-hmm. Town pump. Mm-hmm. Manipulative. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's kind of, that so pretty much subs, some sort Sarah's of... Sarah's current husband used to be a police uh-huh. agonaut. They've moved to Ithaca. He's now a truck driver, yep. which probably works great for her because she can just go have sex with 862 guys. Yeah, she started to panic a little bit. Well, she wanted to live the hippie life and she needed money. Yep. And he had an insurance policy. Yeah, but he was about to lose his job. Oh, He's freaking probably out. Probably because of her. So she had this life insurance policy. He did. Or he did. Covering himself in case he were to die. And who's the beneficiary? Beneficiary? Be- beneficiary. Rary. Ben- <laughs> beneficiary? Rary? Rary? So she wanted this $18,000 to live her hippie ass in style. Well, I mean, you've got to buy money. weed somehow. Mm-hmm. It's not free. Having had groomed little 17-year-old Philip. Uh, so she she asked him to find a hitman for her husband. For real. He, yeah. Yeah, and kind of acted like he was in for people for a while, and then finally she was like, no, really. Yeah, he let her on. Like, you, you better got? find a hitman or the shit's over. So he finds an ex. Green Beret. Yeah. Just fresh home from Vietnam. He was a volunteer assistant wrestling coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He says he's going to do it for $100 down, down and, payment. And then the rest of the 1500 bucks after the insurance life insurance settlement. Does it. Boo, it's kind of typical, isn't it? It's like a Lifetime movie or... Yeah, uh, it's pretty crazy. I might have seen the exact same thing on Unsolved Mysteries. Once again, we go back to the small town issue. Everyone sees everyone coming and going, who people are talking to. Exactly. People know what's happening. And November... Commissioned to kill the husband. Yeah, for a hundred bucks. November 19, 1970, Mm -hmm. she packs all six of her kids up into her vehicle, which I can only imagine as the station wagon with, like, the rear-facing seat. With, like, the vinyl applique that looks like wood on the side? Those were the best. Yeah. We had one of those ones. My aunt had one. It was great. My yeah. cousins and I With had the seat good times. In the back, in We'd the be back. like waving at the cars uh-huh. behind us, doing the honky <laughs> horn thingy. She took them shopping and on errands, actually with, I believe her neighbor, I didn't write it in here, but she had someone with her on those besides the uh, kid. Not sure. So Philip and the wrestling coach were hiding, one on each side of the garage. Coach had a steel bar. Philip had a revolver. Mm -hmm. Philip actually never took the revolver out. I don't believe. Don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. The husband comes home, rolls into the garage, gets out of his car, and Coach whacks him a couple times on the noggin with a steel bar. Yep, and then takes off. They're gone. Moments later, Sarah rolls in in their woody station wagon, and she sees her husband lying there. Doesn't get out of the car. Why? Uh, At least fake it. Yeah. If you're going to plan this. You've got kids in the car. A couple of them are, I think one of them was like 14 at the time. You know, she saw the body laying there. Didn't see blood, but so saw the body. You at least have to. I mean, if you're going to do this, you know, put on your full Goddamn drama. fake it, for Christ's sake. Yeah. So she pulls in. Okay, we could call it panic. She panics, goes to the neighbor. We know what happened, so we can't say she panics. 
panicked, but right. she panics, goes to the neighbor, calls the cop. Cops come there, and uh, this poor police officer. He, he was ordered to stay there all night long with the body, guarding it, and the crime scene. Investigative crew from Lansing could arrive. Oh, my God. God. So he, yeah, he's there, standing there in his little black police coat, you know, with the, the fur away collar. Ate all night. Mm-hmm. He guarded the shit out of that dead body, and I give him mad props. That's Because I would have been like, no, thank you. Yep. The very next day, Sarah oh. would arrive at Wolverine Express at 8.30 in the morning. Pretty early for... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Husband just got shot. Yep. And then you just get up at the crack of black and go to his The insurance place. agent, yeah. Yeah. Just to find out if she was the beneficiary. Benef- beneficiary? You can't Dog say it. I can't. It's great. It's like me with that one guy's of name. The, yeah, of the $18,000 life insurance policy. This is my thing. Yeah. Would you or would you not? actually check in to see if you beneficiary before you killed this guy. Oh, yeah, you get that stuff established before. I'm just anything. saying, if I didn't know, I'm not just going to kill him in hopes that I'm the beneficiary. <laughs> Noop through his files. I don't know. Don't right. kill him first and then hope you are You don't even have to actual... snoop, you just ask. Say, hey. hey. What's no, up? I'm just concerned, you know. Am, am I... Just in case something your, were to happen. You know, God forbid. Just you know, in, in case, case I put some happen. strychnine in your mm-hmm. natty light beers, Fuck. what would happen? Why does this smell funny? Funny. Anyways. Natty light. So that's obviously weird. She does that before she calls the funeral home. Police report note that showing that the insurance was checked on before the arrangements were set up before her dead husband. Mm-hmm. Kind of setting up a red flag for little small town hero popos. Oh, of course. I mean, like I said, in her defense, if never mind. Yeah. There's nothing in her defense that can no. be said. You Popo try to understand their on side, it. everyone's No, side. there's no understanding no. her side. In retrospect, I can't understand it. At the time, I might have understood it. Like, oh, she's freaking out. My husband just died. How am I going to pay for this funeral? But seriously, right. no, within hours. How, mm. No, I'm I'm going to be crying for three days. Yeah. And other people are going to be like, Mary, you have to do this. Yeah. Yeah, she wasn't like yeah, that. Yeah, you lose your God stuff. God, fuck. So the cops were on this one. Yeah, they they knew something was not Red flag. right. Yeah, anyone who loves their husband that much is not going to make their first call to the insurance well, company. Well, exactly. And we now know she wasn't exactly monogamous. Mon- monogamous. Yeah, how? During any of her relationships. And nobody in the small town could keep this under wraps. Before we know, a few tipsters. We like to call them nosy <laughs> Nancys. Tipsters. Tipsters. So a bunch of guys were under suspicion, eh? Yeah. They led him to Philip, mm-hmm. young 17-year-old Philip, mm-hmm. who then led him to Coach. Mm-hmm. Then they ended up being arrested three both days. Of, both of them. Bo- both <laughs> three days before Christmas in 1970. From the time of the arrest, this is one of those weird Michigan words, Gratio. Gratchet. Gratchet. Great, great. It's Gratchet. Grat. Gratchet County officials wanted Philip Grat and Coach riot. locked up in lightning speed while Sarah would face years of drama, starting with her complete loss of memory of and course. avoid conviction like forever. Right. It's forever. Ridiculous. Philip and Coach quickly pled guilty and they also refused to testify against Sarah. Mm hmm. They were still hoping for a little piece of that stuff. You know, whatever magic she had there. Oh, something, I don't know what it was. Sarah was pegged in police reports as the mastermind of her husband's murder. Once, she was declared mentally ill and then went missing for several years as police and prosecutors tried to convict her of her orchestrating of the killings. Mm -hmm. She had convinced coach that they would eventually meet up in Florida to maintain a relationship. Yeah, but she, she had another dude down there that she was I communicating know. with the whole time with her little private <laughs> P.O. box. Somehow she evaded court proceedings and ultimately any conviction with all these misfortunes. 
that range from drug overdose the night she was mm-hmm. arrested to complete memory loss. Then she disappeared for several years as police quizzed family, friends, and numerous romantic interests. Romantic interests. We can go into an entire episode of what she did. Yeah, I don't have time for that, and it's gross. It you was know, I, so much. The town pump. It, I'm sorry, I, I had to no, use that term. It's not even that. It's she just went into so much to elude the entire system. There were lots of different warrants put out, and depending on who the judge was at the time, her mental illness was back and forth. She was mostly in the Ionia State Hospital, where she managed to escape with a fellow inmate. So interestingly, there's a prison there, too, in Ionia. You're right. Yeah. The hospital is no longer... Oh, is not... There's... They shut a whole mess of them there's down. N- I'm pretty sure there's no there's mental n- institute. Well, left. there there are. There's a couple, High rest is kind still of. Yeah, but it's around. not like those mental institutes. With all the shock treatments and probes. And she changed the- her name, and last I knew, she still lived in Michigan. Got away with it, boo. And that's nuts. Coach and Philip are still in jail to this day. Well, they kind of actually did the deed. I feel like... Manipulated them into doing it. Coach did the deed. He whacked this guy. Yep. Philip was a 17-year-old. He was there, and yes, he should be serving some amount of time. Held accountable for his actions, yeah. But he was 17. He shouldn't still be in jail for something she manipulated him to do. She had dirt on people because of the old good old boys Mm -hmm. club. Yep. She Mm -hmm. nestled her little. So, if you want to look into it, there is a phenomenal amount of this is why she got away with it. Mm. She had dirt Mm. on people and she was a photographer. So, she had pictures. She had testimony. No. That's all I'm saying. Mm. Hmm. He's evaded any charges to this day. The Morning Sun newspaper, which isn't one of those. Not the British Sun, is it? Not the, like the Inquirer or anything. Oh, okay. Former Trooper Anderson said, I've always felt there was something really wrong with the case. I wouldn't criticize the officers. They felt she should be arrested, and they arrested her. But no justice was served because she didn't serve a day in prison. Hmm. Yeah, years later in the 90s. We're talking like 20 years later. They're a stepdaughter. Great math. By the way. Would, thank you. It would also be Alonzo's child. Actually remember seeing his body, which is disturbing. So she led a crusade to get the 17-year-old Philip out of prison to no avail. Which is big of her. I mean... Well, she, she saw the way her, her mom was manipulative and saw how she could spin webs and manipulate people. Uh, she told a story about the time when she was 14. Oh, my God. Okay. She her step monster, yeah. Sarah, read her diary, finds out about a crush she has on the 17-year-old kid. Step monster, Sarah, goes out and fucks a 17-year-old kid that her stepdaughter has a crush on. That's just evil. And just fucking It's disgusting, disgusting and, and evil. And gross and evil. And mm-hmm. then she came back and told the 14-year-old stepdaughter that she had I mean, sex that, with that, that, this that's, that's just crush. ruining someone's young psyche, doing stuff like that. Oh, my God. So much fuck up <sighs> with that. Okay, A, reading the yeah. kid's diary. I can... Expand. No, it's not okay. It's Ever. not okay. I understand. You want to be a good parent and see, but no. Oh, no, that's private stuff. It's your own. You know, that, that's just, why people put locks on them. Oh my God! Not for anyone else's eyes. Another one of Sarah's stepdaughters was known to have said, I always called it her web. I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of her. I don't know if you've seen her. A very pretty lady and a very, well, she could just get people to do things they wouldn't normally agree to. Yeah, it's messed up. So Sarah's 77 years old now, probably still working it. Ew, I'm sure she is. I think she's still alive. I didn't take the time 
time to look into what her nasty ass is doing. It'd be interesting to know, but anyway. But she never served time except for the minimal amount of time in the mental institute. Where she probably just had she sex with the entire everybody. Yes. <laughs> so there you have it. Wow. And the That's poor guys who are still alive. I do know the guys are still alive and they're still in prison. <laughs> they're, I don't know. She's wandering around. Yeah. Wig- wiggling her a little geriatric hiney. Mm. Oh, gross. <laughs> God All damn saggy. it. All <laughs> of the woman's psychoness with that one. Ugh. Who's our happy ending tonight, Mr. Boot? We have a really interesting and long standing band that I have seen for years in Grand Rapids. They're called Dangerville. Dangerville's been around, God, man, I, the first time I saw them, like a few, few months, maybe a couple months after the 9-11 incident, 2001, right? Yeah. But they, they had been around well before that. But what, I, I remember a very clearly. A little rockabilly. A rockabilly, little psychobilly. Psychobilly. Yeah, they consider themselves psychobilly. Jim Danger is vocals and plays guitar. Eric Souls will Eric play Souls the Eric Souls is a bass stand- player from Mars. This dude. He'll play the stand-up the bass upright. until mm. his fingers fucking bleed. I've seen his fingers blistered and bleeding, and Insanity. he doesn't stop. He just goes. <laughs> he, he will be barefooted on the stage and just keep playing. Uh-huh. And then we have DJ on drums. Yep, Danny. DJ playing drums. I've seen him playing in DJ. multiple bands around town. Let's uh, me sleep uh, with his Yeti. Uh, apparently, he's a drummer's drummer. Very I've heard popular. Him to. Yeah, he, he he's a drummer's fits in drummer. With bands that he's never played with and pulls it off like there's no tomorrow. My God, he got to sit in with uh, the dude from Stray Cat. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, was it the the bass player he played with? The, yeah. Think of his name right now. Anyways, we're going to leave you with Dangerville. Check them out. You will not be disappointed. Oh, great stuff. You could bring your aunt to the show and she would love it. Your aunt would. Absolutely. Cheers. Yes. Happy episode. Dangerville. Peace out. This is Dangerville. We love you. Thank you for... Oh, rate us. Like us. Thumbs up us. Do all the things. Bye. 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 Bye.